When you want your code to catch and handle an exception, you put the code that could throw the exception inside a try block followed by one or more catch blocks. If the lines of code in the try block throws an exception, it's caught by a matching catch block and you can include code there to handle it. The try and catch blocks can optionally be followed by a finally block which contains code that is executed whether or not an exception is thrown. Now here's the layout of a block that catches two types of exceptions. Each of the catch blocks names a specific exception class and it will catch any exception of that class or any subclass of it. When an exception is thrown, the test for a match starts with a first catch, moves from one to the other until either a match is found or not. If no match is found, the throw action leaves this method and continues on up looking for a matching catch somewhere else. The best way to show you this is with an example. This program accepts the name of a file on the command line and then makes a duplicate of that file. The copy method is called with the name from the command line and a new file name. Inside the method, two new file objects are created. As you know, a file object is a representative of a file. The file doesn't need to exist for the file object to exist, but this object gives you access to information about the file. Anyway, these two objects can be used to open files. Now, this is the opening of the try block. Inside this block is the code that may or may not throw an exception. In this example, a new file reader and writer object is created. These open the files for input and for output. Every character of the input file is read and written to the output file, and once that's done, both files are closed. Now, any of these actions can throw an exception, but because it's inside a try block, there's no need to check the return value to see what's going on with each method call. That's all handled by the exception. All of the possible exceptions thrown by these methods are I.O. exceptions. Some of them are subclasses of the I.O. exception class, but since they're all I.O. exceptions, any one of them will be caught by this statement. The code here simply outputs the fact that the copy failed and then prints the exception itself. Converting an exception to a string results in a brief description of the exception. There are methods you can use to get the information in a different form and get more information and even get the method call traceback. The final action taken for this exception is that the method returns to its caller. This is not necessary. If you don't put a return statement here, the code would simply drop through to the statements following the try-catch block. Now, this code is always executed. Whether the copy failed or succeeded, this line will always be displayed. In truth, you won't use finally very often, but there are cases where it's a very handy thing to have. Here's what happens when you try to make a copy of a file that doesn't exist. The input file, in this case, did not exist, so an exception was thrown. The displayed line specified the type of exception that was thrown and a reason why it was thrown. As the exception was being handled, the return statement was executed. But just before the return statement was executed, the code in the finally block was executed. Now, here's what happens when the copy succeeds. This command will cause the program to make a copy of its own source code. No exception was thrown. The code of the finally block is executed, then the try-catch block drops through, and the code in the rest of the method is also executed. That's about all there is to exception throwing and catching. The only thing I didn't describe is the process of writing your own exceptions, but that's easy enough. All you have to do is define a new class that extends one of the existing exception classes, then you can create an instance of your own and throw it. And you can use its name in a catch statement to catch it. In the next lesson, I'll show you some considerations in overloading and overriding methods that throw exceptions.